I do not believe that you're either born patient or you're not. I think it's learned. You want to know how? Stay tuned. I'd like to give you a warm welcome to my channel if you've never been before or if you're a returning guest. I'd like to remind you before we get started that if you'd like to see more videos like this to subscribe and please feel free to comment as the video goes along and give your opinion on today's topic, which is... You ready for this? How to be patient! On the one hand, this is a ridiculous video to make because it makes it sound like I've got my life all together and I don't. But on the other hand... I've had lots of practice having to learn patience, so that sort of kind of makes me an expert. Patience has been on my mind a lot lately because I have so many things that I'm waiting for and I'm eager for them to happen and I, they're not happening, like I have to wait. I used to think this was just a stage of life, but I'm learning the older I get that everybody has something they're waiting on. So, instead of thinking there's this magical stage we're going to reach in life where all of a sudden we don't have to be patient anymore, wouldn't it make more sense to actually study how to be patient? That's not a crazy thing to do. So I think everybody has this idea that you can't learn patience. Either you come with it or you don't. I'm a seamstress by trade and I cannot tell you how many times I've had this conversation. You sew for a living? <laughs> You must be such a patient person. I could never sew for a living. I just don't have the patience. We think it's just this magical thing of either we know how to be patient or we don't and we're just born that way. I'm here to tell you that's not true. No, not true at all. So the Bible teaches that if someone has the Spirit of God living inside of them, it produces things. And it, there's a list of those things in Galatians. Patience is one of those things. Um, the Bible also <laughs> refers to it as um, forbearance, long-suffering, um, several other words are used to just encompass this idea of being patient. So obviously, I have a long ways to go in learning about things in life, but I want to share with you two main things that I've learned that help with developing patience, and one of those things has like subcategories under it, okay? Let's get started. One of the th biggest causes of impatience is this tiny fear inside that maybe we don't even acknowledge that says, this thing is never going to happen. And we just, we get anxious, we get we just fretful, we want it to happen, and the reason we get so tight about it is because deep inside we're afraid it's never going to actually happen. Now, the Bible talks about experience produces hope, and hope makes us not ashamed. It also says that, um, if you let patience have its perfect work, you will be perfect and complete, wanting nothing. So the idea of a person who has learned to be patient is, is a completed person. Not necessarily a um, perfect, not in the sense of never does anything wrong, but perfect in the sense that they are complete and, and whole and they're not constantly chasing after the next thing. They've become patient. So there's this idea expressed that a person who is patient is completely satisfied because they're not just living in the present. They're, they have eyes for the future and they're completely 100% convinced it's gonna happen. So they're not worried about it. They're like, it's going to happen. So that's the first thing that steals our joy and gives us impatience is we struggle with believing whether or not something's actually going to happen. So if you find yourself impatient about something, stop and think, is this something that I'm absolutely 100% is going convinced it's going to happen, and then, you know, sit back and wait. That's easier said than done, isn't it? How do we have confidence that something's going to happen? Well, you have to have confidence in something trustworthy. So, when I'm praying for something and I want it to happen, and I'm struggling with whether or not it's going to happen, or whether God can actually do this, it's helpful for me to go back into history. Remember that verse that says, experience produces hope? go back into my journals or talk with friends about bygone times and look at all the times where God has done the impossible. And that gives me confidence and hope for the future and helps me be less impatient. What about being impatient with people? That's a lot harder, isn't it? I, you know, somebody just is driving me up the wall, getting on my nerves, and I have trouble being patient with them. 
Well, one thing that can help is remembering how patient God has to be with me. There's a story in the Bible that Jesus told about a man who was forgiven by a king for a debt he owed, a huge debt, and then he went out and he threw somebody in prison because they owed him just a small amount. It's hard to be impatient with somebody else when you're being thankful that somebody else was patient with you. So when I find myself getting impatient with people, the first thing that I try to do is go back and think, okay, who's being patient with me right now? And a lot of times, well, it's always God. He's always patient with me. And then there's a lot of people in my life that are patient with me as well. And the more I list them and think about how patient they're being with me, the more insignificant this one person in front of me making me impatient appears in my life because they're just a small portion of what I'm dealing with and surely I can have the grace to be patient with one person for five minutes when so many people in my life are being patient with me. And if it's somebody that I'm continually having to be patient with because it's like somebody that just doesn't want to seem to grow up or somebody who's constantly on my nerves, you know what? I just have to do that little brain exercise over and over again. The last thing I want to say is take time to enjoy the process of being molded and shaped through learning patience. Guess what? Trials and tribulation and difficulties teach you patience. There's no other way to learn it. You have to go through hard times in order to develop patience. Just like there's no way to get muscles aside from lifting things. Um, whether it's actual weights or whether you're lifting children. If you're lifting, you've got to lift something to get muscles. And you have to go through tough times to get patient. So, to get patient. To get patient. You have to go through tough times to develop patience. So don't be afraid of that. Try to just enjoy the process and learn as much as you can while you're going through it. A spirit of joyfulness and gratefulness goes a long way when you're trying to develop patience. But it can be done. Maybe not perfectly. I don't think any of us will ever be perfectly patient. I'm probably going to walk out of here and be impatient with somebody as soon as I'm done with this video because that's how life works. But I can learn and grow and I know that I'm more patient now than I was five years ago. And that's pretty cool because I don't believe that attitude that says we're either born with patience or we're not. So yeah, I'm having to learn patience right now in the area of deputation. If you don't know what deputation is, watch my last video and that'll explain what that is. But yeah, things don't happen as fast as I want them to, so I'm focusing on enjoying the process and enjoying what I'm learning through it. Thank you for being so patient throughout this entire video. I would love if you would comment below and tell me what's one thing you're struggling with right now, learning patience, and I will pray for you. And um, I will, yeah, try to encourage you if I can. Who knows? Maybe I've gone through the exact same thing and we can help each other. Anyway, I thank you for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe and comment and interact with me and all that fun stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video soon. Up until then, I hope that you have a great rest of your day 